Now, when I think of Vin Diesel, I literally just think Dominic Toretto. Vin Diesel for me doesn't really exist anymore. And of course, his famous tagline. His family. I got family. My family. There's always room for family. But what else is synonymous with Vin Diesel? That's right, his voice. Familiar, familiar. And in Wheelman, the voice is quite literally the main character. Nothing's gonna happen until we say it happens. What are you talking about? Everyone else's voice is at around 60% volume. Vin Diesel has decided to make his voice around 160 and he's cranked that bass right up. This guy is literally tickling your soul every time he opens his mouth. Sometimes a controlled crash is your best option. Do not play this game with headphones on. Now the plot of this game, kind of, is Vin Diesel as Milo Burek. He is an undercover agent embedded in the criminal underworld of Barcelona. His mission is to tear the gangs apart from the inside, which is kind of like Brian's character in Fast and Furious, although not quite as aggressive. Now this is very much a straight to DVD film, but as a game. It's not groundbreaking in any way. It is a massive mix of cliches and predictable twists. The plot is quite literally an excuse for Vin Diesel to just be the action star of this game and as his own video game studio co-created this game you'd expect nothing less. This guy's ego oozes through the screen. Hey Milo, word on the street is you left Felipe Leal stuck underneath a crane. You believe everything you hear? About you? <laughs> Always. Now the driving mechanics are the heart of the action within Wheelman, and some would say that this is the best part of the game, although there are other elements. The mechanics of driving, surprisingly, not that bad. Quite polished in many ways. They're quite smooth, responsive even. The environment is quite unique in the fact that you don't see Barcelona in many video games. It's a nice mix of real landmarks, some fictional elements here and there, and it's quite a vibrant world, and it does kind of keep you immersed, even by today's standards. Now, of course, with all the action going on in this game, you can expect some over-the-top stunts and special moves. The Cyclone, for example. You can spin your car 180 degrees, a la driver, but with absolutely no skill involved whatsoever, as it is literally a button push. And you can shoot your enemies in reverse. Once you're done, or the meter runs out, you flick it again, or indeed it'll just automatically do it, and you'll be driving normally again. Whereas in a game like Driver, this is all skill. In Wheelman, you push the button and it does it automatically, which is not really satisfying in any way, although it is kind of cool at the same time. The Airjack move allows you to leap from one moving vehicle to another, very much like the Matrix as an example, but with less green. Now these two mechanics alone are really cool and fun to use for about seven minutes. And then after then they get very repetitive, especially when you realize that Dominic sorry, Milo Burek's car doesn't really like to explode until he's jumping from it. And that is one thing that this game does well the first time, maybe possibly the second time you do it. Now, as you get shot at and rammed by your enemies, your car will very slowly take damage as opposed to your opponent's car, which if you ram once, will probably crash and burn. Now, the first time you perform the air jack move, it's spectacular. Great sense of suspense. Oh, the car literally just exploded as I jumped off it. Good thing I pressed the button when I did. But the more you do it, the more you realize your car is very unlikely to explode until you press that button. Your car can take an unholy amount of damage because you are quite literally the main character who doesn't ever seem to die. Which brings me on to my next point, And in my opinion, a very weird mechanic, and that is that you can't shoot police or civilians and yet you can destroy the vehicles that they're in. Although they don't die, but you can still run them over. You can throw people out of moving vehicles when you jump from one vehicle to another. So it's not logical at all. It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, as much as the world is immersive, it does get a little bit choppy as the budget here is quite clearly not massive. Popping is a real issue. It's always daytime. You can never drive in night. And it does lack for variety in the game, especially when the game loop is very repetitive. If they had just a night mode, for example, it would make things look completely different. And even though the game loop is the same, it would kind of make you feel like you were playing a different game half the time, or at least add a little bit of variety. There is an unholy amount of text in this game. Yes, there are cutscenes, but the story is so convoluted and complicated, you will need to read every single 
single bit of text to even have a chance of understanding what's going on. And when you think about how the game is based around really fast paced, high octane action, Dominic Toretto jumping from cars as they just about explode, spinning your car around, shooting while driving backwards, to then have to sit through 10 minutes worth of reading in between gameplay does break it up considerably and slows the game down, almost ruining the flow. If I had to compare this game to anything, I would say that it's probably a cross between Burnout and a Unity made Grand Theft Auto. It even has the Burnout takedowns, which do look cool and are quite satisfying, although they do get very repetitive. The game, unfortunately, is very easy. It's near impossible to fail a mission thanks to slowdown, and of course being able to swap vehicles whenever you're damaged. That can be a plus point, and I'm not saying I need games to be difficult, tricky, and a challenge every time, but even on the hardest difficulty, this game just isn't that hard. If you're into mindless violence and action, and you don't need the game to be difficult, and in fact you quite like things to be easy, that isn't a negative. It does feel like it's holding your hand the entire time. It over explains things to the point where you wonder why you're doing it and why the game just doesn't do it for you. Big Dom has an insane amount of plot armor in this game and it does almost make you feel like you're playing Robocop and I guarantee he was one of the main reasons why that is the case in this game as his studio had a huge part to play. It takes around five to six hours to complete which doesn't sound like a particularly long time, but doing the same thing over and over again gets old very, very quickly. You could play this game quite comfortably within like 10, 20 minute stints and not find it that bad. But if you sit down to play it for an extended period of time, it starts to drone after a while, especially the depth of Dom's voice. It's a gift. It's not all car chases, of course. There are some third person action shooting missions, but unfortunately these are hampered by the fact that you just feel like you're in a shooting range. The enemies don't really do an awful lot, they just sort of stand there and wait for you to shoot them in the face. Which again, if you're into mindless action, you're not really that bothered about anything challenging, it's not a negative. But after you shoot the third or fourth enemy, it's not really fun anymore. As you progress through the story and you get to the latter missions, that's when you do encounter some sort of a challenge, if you can make it that far. I've badmouthed this game quite a lot, and that's because there are an awful lot of things wrong with it. But if you're looking for an early 2000s sight into the mind of Vin Diesel, this is kind of up your street. It's not terrible to the point where you shouldn't play it, and it tries its best to be fun, and I know some people will enjoy that. And if you absolutely love Vin Diesel, then you will get a good laugh out of this game. Is it one you need to play before you die? No, probably not. Is it the worst game I've ever played? No, far from it. It does get very repetitive, but there definitely are some good action moments in this game that will have you thinking, yeah, that's kind of cool. I enjoyed that. That wasn't too bad. If you see it in a bargain bin or super cheap in CEX, sure, pick it up, put it in your collection, pop it in every now and again. Let Dominic Toretto race through the streets of Barcelona, jumping from car to car, throwing civilians out onto the road at 60 mile an hour and then refusing to shoot them because that's immoral. Just don't pay any attention to the story. Not that you could if you tried. Not a bad idea. You're going to need some divine intervention. 